So we were talking about um, American players for the pool for the 2024 World Championships. You can see this either just icing the ball or a shot down the floor at the empty net. Here's Ryan Tarafenko racing down. You can just be watching this play. Sees that the ball is in the crease. He can't pick that ball up and then step into the crease. That's a back in. So he waits until he has time to get into the crease. Then he's allowed to pick it up right here. He can't pick it up right now and then step in. He turns the ball over. He waits. He scoops it up. That little hesitation, that, that thought process has to be so quick. And that is something that is really impressive to see from an American player who's only been playing box across for a few years. And that the, it's becoming so instinctive. And he's going to be a big part of that U.S. team for the 2024 Worlds. And I'll tell you, the defensive group, I mean, you're looking to me, the guys who are kind of locks for that team. Uh, TJ Comizio, Tim Edwards, Eli Gobrecht, if he's healthy. I think Bobby Kidd, for sure, would be on there. I think Dylan Robinson. I've got Ryan Tarafenko as well. Uh, I believe Joel White is playing again. He was certainly at the uh, Lax Night where the, the USA White and USA Blue played as part of a training camp. He looked fantastic. That's a group right there of about eight or nine guys um, that are just, you know, so solid, strong players. And beyond that, you've got, I mean, you go through the rest of the list. I've got guys and, you know, said, hey, here are the here are the guys. So past those guys, you're looking at a list that includes Trevor Baptiste, Liam Burns, Isaiah Davis, Allen, TD Erlen, Danny Logan, Joe Nardella, Ethan O'Connor, John Rannigan, Justin Robbins, Taylor Stewart, and Dalton Sulver as other contenders. Um, you got Jackson Reed from Albany. I didn't even include in that group because I hadn't really seen him play a lot. I don't I don't know that he would make that team, but um, you know, that's an NLL player, like a legitimate NLL player. Um, and somebody like Connor Kirsch is also I haven't included in there. Some people might think he's a lock. Um, he's a he's a very good player uh, for Las Vegas, as you said. Like there's a ton of talent. I haven't seen him play much, but I know since I've been watching him this year, he has been one of my favorite defensive players to watch. He is all over. He doesn't seem to ever run out of uh, gas. He's good. He's very good. And you know, I, I think his brother CJ is probably the best of them that we've seen so far. The lefty forward plays. Uh, he's not in the NLL yet. He's going to be. A very, very early draft pick, probably. I would say, you know, among the top two uh, or three, I think, in the league. He plays for um, Mimico in the summer, where he was just dynamic, absolutely brilliant. And at the uh, at the Lax night, where they had, as I said, this U.S. camp, he stood out. I thought he and Joey Spelina were absolute revelations. I mean, Spelina was great in Orangeville, and, and Kurtz was great in the summer as well. So we knew that they were really good with playing against men and playing, you know, with the rest of the U.S. contenders for the national team, I thought Kirsten Spelina stood out. You look at the left side, where you've got C.J. Kirsten, Blaze Reardon, are obviously pretty central figures, I think, for that team. And then you've got guys like Brandon Robinson from Buffalo, who plays a huge role as a, as a depth guy, a, a grit guy, a pick guy. Um, Mac O'Keefe, Charlie Bertrand, Matt Rambo, who's not even playing this year, uh, you know, and and Brennan O'Neill, who I mean, how much does he want to play box? He loves box. He he loves playing box. He's played some in the Connecticut League and things. Um, Brennan O'Neill is an absolute star. Obviously, the MVP of the World Field Championships. Is he going to be on there? And I'll tell you another guy. There's another left that I saw that I hadn't heard of going into the Lax night. Um, Patrick McIntosh. Holy cow! He is really good. He's a great athlete. Another lefty forward that. He'd be they if they had him on the team, he would not be hurting them. He could play against, you know, he could he'd be competing hard against the Canadas and Haudenosaunees of of the world. But I don't I don't see how with all those other names he makes the team. But I know they like him, and he's really something. And quickly, you go on the right side. You know, you've got Spryber and Resoteric, obviously are key guys for that team. How would you like to pick among for the other two spots on the right side, really? Jack Hanna, Joey Spelina, Connor Kelly, Charlie Kitchen. You've also got, I mean, Cole Kirst is playing in Halifax. John Piatelli playing in Albany. I don't know if either of them can bump any of those guys off. Kyle Baker was fantastic. Plays for the main Northman. And uh, he was outstanding in the last night. He's such a good player. Again, I don't know how he gets into that into that mix. Um, it's, yeah, just to crack. And, and, I mean, once you get up to that point, you are kind of splitting hairs with some of those guys. But I tell you, that kid Spelina, he has a... Oh. Uh, 
a creativity about him though and like a just that fire he he was a lot of fun to watch he's honestly sometimes you can feel the energy that players bring and when yeah. we were there watching that game that kid he He's like the Energizer Bunny, though. He feels it. He loves it. You can see the expression on his face when he's scoring. Yeah. And uh, I, I wouldn't want to be the coaches that are trying to make those decisions. I can tell you that. Oh, my goodness. I I, I mean, I to me, I think he, he's – because he's only going to be better after yeah. another year with Orangeville. Where, I mean, folks, honestly, if you didn't watch Orangeville play last year when they went undefeated in the regular season, actually didn't lose a game until the finals when Burlington Blaze took them out then went on to win the Minto Cup. Orangeville with some young guys. I mean, Spelina is still young. Uh, Trey Deer, Caleb Benedict, uh, Colton Marquis. That, that's an unbelievable. Uh, Jamison Bucktooth, unbelievable. And I, I know I'm missing at least one of the like really star players. You know, uh, it's the other. It's the other lefty. Um, like just unbelievable. The talent that this that this team put together. Nick Rose, the the GM, has done a fantastic job. And you watch Spelina play with those guys. Holy cow! Beginning of the summer, he was he was okay. Super athlete, very skilled, obviously. But you could see he was still getting a feel for playing box a lot. He's he's played. He's played when he's had chances. But playing all the time with these guys, it took him a bit. He was getting points just from being athletic and handling the ball a lot. But as the season went on, man, he was legit one of the best players in that. Yeah. I mean, he may never have been the best player on the team for a game because you've got Trey Deer and Ben and Marky, like all these guys just absolutely shining. Um, Matthews. It was Liam Matthews, the other one. Um, that's a that's an incredible yeah. offensive group and their defense and, and Chris Origliari and now that's a great group that's a great team yeah that's and Burlington a, yeah. beat them shows you how good Burlington was too right so yeah yeah there's a uh, there's no lack of talent up there so I actually only watched a couple uh, I watched one Orangeville game and yeah that was impressive you should watch more yeah I, I, I probably <laughs> will my problem is is yeah. in the uh, in the summertime in the usually between filming it's so hard for us to find You're doing any time. a lot of games. Yeah. It's a pretty big digression from one play by Ryan Tarafenko. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, that's that's it. I, I don't envy you trying to edit this down to a reasonable length. And it's always fun to sit here and go through some of these highlights. And I really like, I mean, there's lots of great highlights. See on the, you know, the, the NLL's putting out, doing such a good job getting them out on, on Twitter slash X and uh, getting the highlights available, putting the full games up on YouTube. So, you know, people can go and see what's going on. But I really love to dive into some of these things that you clip for us that, you might not see in the highlights because it's not, you know, something that doesn't lead to a goal for it, but is a fantastic play. I like to see it. I like to say, hey, look at this thing. Look at this, what this guy does. Um, you know, the Terrafenko play at the end there, I just thought it just really showed a huge demonstration of how his lacrosse IQ and lacrosse instincts have evolved quick to make that split second smart play in a stressful situation. You're losing a game late in the game. You have to race down, hope it's not going to go in the net. And then you just, all you want to do is get that ball and take off and to have the presence of mind to be like, Oh, I'm going to wait till my feet are in. The It'd be yeah. so easy to make a mistake there and give up the ball. And, and uh, there's no way I wouldn't have at least knocked it before I went behind the crease. And then I'd have definitely grabbed it and stepped through. They would have set it in the crease and given yeah. the ball to, not that I can even run that fast. So I'd never would have been down there. To be yeah, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be going through the crease and on his way back out. And I'd still be in the best center yeah. running down. I mean, Tara Fink was unbelievably fast. What, what an ass. Absolutely. I love it. All right. All right. Well, Thanks, man. thank Always you. Great. And we'll definitely do it again uh, next week.